Welcome to my VR sketchbook flip through. So my sketchbook started as these little tiles and each tile uh, is connected to this home base via a calendar and an index. Let's just go to the first page. So this is April 6th, 2017. Everything in here was made on April 6th. And this notebook page is all about this idea I have about avatar-based storage. So here you can see the front of the avatar is broken up into these different sections. And each one of these different sections if I pulled out of my chest, in this example, my favorites palette would come out. If I pull, um, if I reach into my eyes and pull a panel out, you would get these animations with, if you'd like to store more with these tabs, the panels could be locked in space and the tabs moved from panel to panel. And then on the back of the avatar, um, less used, um, Things that you wanted to store less used models or less used software would be stored in the back here, mostly because it's harder to get your arm around behind you than to just pull things out of your, the front of your body. Some of the panels are close enough together that you can just hop from one to the other, or you can go to the home node. So let's just hop over here. This is a day, here we go. April 7th, which was a Friday. This was one of the first days I started playing with our VR coding blocks, which you can see in the expressive programming blog post on LVR.com. Uh, so this is the first time I really started making uh, branching um, behavior trees, or sorry, branching behaviors that this little lamp would do. So this one has an, an avatar in it. So it says, um, if the is, lamp is touched by Evelyn, then do this thing and play the hi Evelyn sound and then go back to itself in the first thing. So if I was Evelyn and I touched this lamp, the top would swivel between the two states. Or if I was Vi in this case and I touched the lamp, this bottom section would sw swivel and it would say hi Vi or hi Evelyn, depending on who I was. So this is the seventh. Let's hop over here to this day. Uh, let's see, what day was this? April 11th, a Tuesday. So continuing to work with the coding blocks here, you can see me trying to design a fist that goes through different loop states and these different uh, touch actions um, modify the loop state in some way. So let's see, here's the, the fist loop for this loop over here, which goes through the, these three states. And when it is looked at, the loop state animates, but if it's told this password, it will play a noise and emit a key if the password is correct. But if it's consumed, it will stop animating. And if someone touches it without telling it the password, it'll say, keep your pause to yourself and it will change the password. But we needed a way to store this password. So I started experimenting over here with ways of generating a dice roll in VR um, using our, um, our sort of sculptural block system, ways of storing a data type and a string. Maybe the, the password has a little name tag. Uh, some of these were contributed by the rest of my LVR people, LVRians. Um, here's another one. Uh, password's name is duck or potato or pasta. And this is the first day I started incorporating physical world images into the VR space. So this was a painting that I did on myself on that same day on April 11th. So it was incorporated into the VR notebook as an image. I'm gonna go back to the node. So you can see here, we've gone through a few of these already, body-based storage, coding with avatar icons, animation loops. And so that was the 11th. And now we're gonna jump to this page here, the 13th by clicking into the uh, index here, external sketchbook with navigation code. So this page contains more um, writing notes, uh, images that I drew that day, the makeup that I wore that day, um, a half-built sculpture that was finished in the, uh, of my dog, Callie, that is finished on a later date that I can show you. And also this is the day that I laid out how to use these 
um, calendars to navigate, mostly because I started running out of the uh, pieces, so that I couldn't add an, an, any more things nearby, so I needed to have a, a teleportation system. Um, and you can see here, using our sculptural programming language, I just coded the little six panel to say when touched, send me from here to April 6th, and then, you know, naming the big panel over there that you can see with the, the avatar stack on it as April 6th, which we using our, our coding blocks would send me over there. So that's basically how my or my calendars worked. Um, that's the day also that uh, we started playing with Tutorial Snowman, which scripts something in any land versus how you would script a very similar behavior using our sculptural programming language. And let's go to parenting and injectors. Um, now, every time I add a new page currently, um, I have to add a new calendar item here. And the way I was doing it before is that there would be a calendar everywhere so you could jump from page to page instead of having to go back to the home world every time because it's really annoying to have to go to every single notebook page and and add the the next day that you just made. So like, you know, for example, I'd have to go to every notebook page and add this day's link in. So that's why we have a, a home world node now. But this was my idea about parenting and like how you would um, have the um, calendars automatically update themselves um, using this touch time um, sculptural programming piece here. Um, I was also wanted to build a sculptural programming block for all of these external pages that I was adding. So I uh, made this injector, which theoretically would let you make a panel and then just flop the injector up there with the URL on it that would automatically update and show you the image. Um, here's that sculpture of my, my dog Callie that I had, um, hadn't quite finished previously. Really love it because, you know, when you are making something and you finished, you don't always get to go back through the history of that thing, but in VR you can easily and cheaply just um, keep making copies of that thing and sort of leaving them in a trail behind you in your notebook until you come to the final object. And then you can come in here and pet the dog belly. Belly! So this is uh, Monday, April 17th, continuing uh, with that same color um, to continue the same day, but I needed more space. And this was the day that I created the current avatar, which I'm currently wearing, which I'll show you now. Um, my avatar looks like this. Hi. So I quickly got bored of this um, like little panel idea and wanted to move away from having these flat panels as the spaces that I was in. So I started making a sculpture of my house. Now, I live in a little row house in San Francisco. So you walk up these steps, this is where the street is, and this is our living room and office, and this is where my closet is, and our bathroom, and the kitchen, the bedroom, and then down here is where my actual physical art studio is. So I started using this model um, later on in the in the uh, in the sketchbook to show um, sort of me using a, a, a more a physical environment that I'm more familiar with to uh, organize my uh, sketches and my daily sort of VR activities. Oh, I just want to come back here for one second. This is the link to the programming public library that we also developed as part of our expressive programming blocks thing. Uh, and if you go to any land, you're, you know, you can come in here and check out all of our programming blocks. And that was made on this day. So not only does the sketchbook have like things that I made in here internal to the sketchbook on that day, but you know, or brings in physical things like I did with the pictures before, but also shows external, I'm gonna use air quotes here, external links to something that is in a completely different environment, this code library. We're not gonna go there right now though, because I would like to continue the tour into May. So this is May. You'll see um, in May, I started to change the, the uh, palette icon from these all being just a different color to actually giving you some information about what was made that day. And you'll see here, this icon on the 15th, um, this icon is similar to the programming public library that I just showed you. That also um, goes to an external link. Um, and that is the environment that we made Evelyn full of cakes for her birthday. Um, so let's see, let's go to May 1st. 
And May 1st, you'll see, this is the um, first time I really started playing with getting um, into that, that um, sort of mini map of my house. So May 1st is outside, but you'll see here, uh, May 1st is when I did actually the building and I added this tree right here because there's a little tree by our house. And inside of, of the May 1st house environment, I added um, these panels to mark where in the spatial environment something that I had made was associated with a date. So I'm still using the panels, but they're much smaller and they're more like little, um, I've been calling them area rugs, area rugs for days that let you think about um, what you did on that day. So on May 9th, what I was thinking about was again, a new layout of my uh, avatar storage idea by just um, sticking a bunch of the apps that I have on my phone, making 3D icons for them, but then also thinking about like where I would store them in a physical avatar body. So this is me. These are my glasses and that is my, my half shaved hair. I tried to get the, the shave on the right side. And you'll see here in one of my eyes, I store my my camera app and my, my Theta control app. Um, in my thigh, I control my Google Maps, my or I store Google Maps. Yelp is stored in my stomach. Here's my little 3D Yelp app and my Google Maps has little trees in there. In my right hand is stored my, and I'm right-handed, so I stored some of my art making tools there, photogrammetry and my Anyland tools. And then my left hand is more of a support hand, so it has weather and time and calendars and things. And then also in that same arm is the, the battery for my phone. Not sure what that would mean in VR, but you know, computers always got batteries and power and stuff. So one ear stores my music app and the other ear stores my podcasting app. Now, all the way down here under my left foot is Instagram and Twitter. Cause I get, you know, I get in a little too much, a uh, little too much of the Instagram and Twitter. So I, I wanted to make it a little, you know, a reach. I gotta, I gotta do some physical activity to actually get Instagram and Twitter. So the podcast app um, was the first app that I tried to sort of sketch out and really think about what that app would look like if I was using it in VR. So there is a poll, um, podcast or sorry there's a whole blog post about this podcast app on lvr.com um it was my first foray into thinking about how um let's go in here and into how a vr os would really work so here you'll see we're on may 10th may 11th is also in this room so may 16th is down here so in this room in particular i'm walking into and running over things in the physical space great Let's move over here. Um, in this room in particular, lots of things kind of got messy and overlapped, and maybe my date marker things didn't work as well, but at least it showed you like sort of what kinds of things I was working on on each day. This was my first um, foray into like, okay, so I need to get new podcast, uh, like I get new episodes, and how would they be organized, and how would I get them, and then how would I use our programming blocks to um just want to fly as the editor so i'm gonna go up here um go back here okay how would we use our programming blocks to sort of code up this um pro this um, podcasting app so here we have the when told block so when told new episode it emits that new episode and the new episode goes down the pipe and ends up in the the pile down there my first foray into the library, creating, you know, different scale podcast apps and icons and what they would look like and how they, how you could make sculptural piles out of them. Um, this notebook here was my first attempt to have a, 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 something that I would wear on my body that would help me navigate around the, um, this notebook itself. So the, um, the covers would bring me to the notebook from any 3D environment, other 3D environment in any land. Like if I was in the programming public library, for example, I could touch this and it would bring me back here. And then the interleaving pages bring me to different pages within the notebook. Um, that navigation didn't work as well as I had hoped because I would accidentally hit it all the time and I would just have myself like flying around accidentally. So I think it's a good concept, but it doesn't actually function the way that I would have hoped. Uh, and you can see here also the, the holdable and wearable scales 
of those um, of those apps. So I'm just going to go back to the um, home node for a second. Um, so you'll see here, like we've gone through several of these. This is this is the notebook that I just showed you from the 16th. Here's an icon, and now we have these other two icons here that are the same, the 25th and the 26th. And these show that I was working on the same project on the same day. So let's go there. So here you'll find yourself inside of the Habitable Scale um, podcast app. I'm not going to go through a lot of about these because there's an entire blog post on them already, and I mostly am trying to give a tour of the virtual sketchbook that I work inside of. So you'll see here next to each other, there are you know two iterations. Uh, this was the previous one that I didn't like quite as much, and then you know this one. And then inside of here, there's also this journal home thing. So this whole sculptural environment is both um, a design in itself for part of a VR OS software ecosystem, but also it's part of my journal. Um, let's see, where haven't we gone? So these are the last two things. Let's go to this plus one. Oh no, there we go, the seven. Um, so now I'm in no environment at all. And I'm just in this, I'm basically standing on this little hover block and there's another little hover block over there. And these, uh, I didn't put these in particular environments because they were just there as like quick little places where I needed to, to store something before I exported them. And if, in our most recent blog post um, called eight AR programming blocks, you'll see all of these pieces exported and used as AR coding blocks, so that's why that's there. And then let's fly over here to our last little stand-on block. Um, another part of AR thing was we were um, determining how to program a lamp in with our AR programming block. So this lamp is in our office and there's, uh, with the hollow lens, we've uh, designed a way to have this coding block say, when touched, tell, dark light. So then you'll go up here and we'll have something inside of the light bulb that here's for this, you know, this button click down here, this dark light button click, and it will change the, the light on and off. Um, and then you'll see here, these are the ones that we, you know, stuck all together so that you could export them as one piece out into AR coding land. So yeah, that's an entire tour of my current notebook. I'm going to be continuing this project. Um, this is the environment that I work the most inside of. Um, so I did, you know, I develop things in here that we can take out into other environments, but this is how my current notebook works. And it'll probably develop over time into a different um, sort of format. Like I have stopped using this indexing thing in favor of the sort of literal icons instead of these non-literal icons. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see how it changes. Uh, thanks for coming. Bye.